Good morning and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought for the 19th of January, Tuesday morning, 2021. Glad you could join me. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Well, we're continuing on in our exploration on reflections in the book of James. So today we come to uh, an interesting passage. Uh, James chapter 1, uh, verses 16 to 18. I'm going to be focusing some attention on this today. And James writes in verse 16 to 18, Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose us to give us birth through the word of truth, that we may, might be a kind of first fruits of all that he created. So when we look at this portion of scripture, we see God is greater than our mind can grasp. Um, we cannot possibly define him or adequately express his character. N- none of us can. Um, unless God chooses to reveal himself to mankind... How can we really know who he is or even the power of his existence? Unless God informs us of his his person, um, we're ignorant of him. You see, God the Father, he lives in unapproachable light. and, And nobody can see his face and live because it's so brilliant and so powerful. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has made the Father known to us. However, God is giving us a revelation of Himself as the living Word in Christ. And that does not take away from any of His attributes. But our Lord Jesus Christ makes God approachable. Now, we're able to speak of Him according to the knowledge that He gives of Himself When Jesus came to see John, for instance, um, on the island of Patmos, if you look at the first chapter of Revelation, we're told, we're given a description of what John saw. And John said that the face of the Son of God before him was shining like the sun in in all of its brilliance. The very sight of his majestic presence exalted and and brilliant caused John to fall at the Lord's feet as though dead. But the Lord approached John and he put his hand on him, his right hand on him, and he said to him, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold now I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. See, God gave us a gift in Jesus. Jesus is the pinnacle of all good and perfect gifts which come from above. Jesus is the gift of God himself, God in the flesh. What he tells us in his word is truth and can be relied upon. In Hebrews 1.3 we're told the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. See, there's no darkness in the Lord, no darkness in his instructions. They are good, and he leads us on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The psalmist King David said it well when he wrote Psalm 119, 104 to 105. Concerning the truth of God's instructions, he says, From your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. See, it's easy for us to be deceived and to rely on our own devices to live our lives. But we have to understand that if we depend upon our own intellect to guide us without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we enter the shadow lands. 
and we're not always going to make the right decisions. In Proverbs 14, 12, Solomon said, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but, is, but its end is the way that leads to death. This principle speaks the truth, for even Solomon in all of his earthly wisdom was in the end guided by his own imaginations, which led him to his own destruction. Now, if Solomon, being the wisest man among us um, in earthly terms, if he was unable to stay the course uh, with truth, what hope do we have if we only rely on our self-power to guide us? See, the wisdom of man is a shifting shadow. We expect, um, really, that no true goodness can come from our fallen natures. The ultimate goodness of any gift must be measured on an eternal scale that can only come from God. It's important for us to understand that many things that might on the surface level seem good to us, for example, winning a lottery, might easily turn to our destruction. In Galatians 6, 7, and 8, um, Paul writes, Do not be deceived. God is not to be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap in return. The one who sows to please his flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, but the one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. See, brothers and sisters, we can be encouraged today. You see, Although we do not have what it takes to live in the light in our own constitution, God has given us every good and perfect gift through His Word. When we not only read the Bible, but allow the Word of God in the Bible to penetrate our beings, then the Word of God fills us with God's brilliance. You see, the same God who created the universe is the Holy Spirit who lives inside of the believer's being. See, we, we can't do it on our own strength, on our own steam. For us to be able to live in a way that pleases God, we must yield our constitution, everything within us, to the person of the Holy Spirit who is given to us as a gift from the Father made possible through the Son. Just as the Father and the Son are steeped in light and radiate light, so the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us as our comforter and our strengthening guide, is steeped in that same light. There's no shadow of turning with God. He enables us to live out the truth of His Word that has been revealed to us in the Bible. See, Solomon knew the truth, and many men know the truth intellectually, but they can't put it into practice, relying upon their own wisdom. Only God himself can steer us and keep us in the light, even as he himself is in the light. And this is why John says in 1 John 1, 7, that, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of, of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. You see, in this way, as James reveals, believers in Jesus collectively as his church, we've been given new birth through the word of truth. God enables us to have true goodness in fellowship with one another and also in fellowship with Him. We are the first fruits of all that God has created, set apart for Him as a harvest of righteousness, eternally saved, delivered, and healed, all to the glory of God the Father. And when He looks at us, He is pleased and says, It is very good. This is something to rejoice over that we are saved, that we are filled, that we are changed, that we are commissioned, and we are empowered to live 
in righteousness and in the light, even as God is in the light. What a beautiful truth. This is food for thought. God bless you and have a wonderful day.